Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. How are we all doing? Have we all had a good weekend? Morning, Jamie. How are you? I am going to get in the pink around this muzzle and then going to go in with the rest of the white. So we've got some pink up here. I hope everybody's had a really good weekend. Happy Jared's birthday day. <laughs> That's not how he spells his name, Jamie. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. It's uh, it's the Twinnies' birthday today. And I can't believe that they're 23. I mean, how has that happened? How do I have twins of 23? That is just crazy. Let me just take out this pencil mark. Uh, I just need to move some bits and pieces around a bit with. No alerts went out on Discord. Alerts for what? What, that I'm streaming? Huh. Don't know. You expect me to know the answers to this stuff? And you didn't get the Twitch one either. Oh. Then I don't know what to say. Sometimes these things work and sometimes they don't. And I don't know why. Because if you go in, if you go in behind the scenes and you look at everything, everything is set up. Everything is set up, everything is connected, everything is where it should be, all the boxes are checked. It should do its thing. So 
so I don't know why it doesn't do its thing. Oh, I wonder if... Um, Just have a look at something. So streamer mode is enabled. Thank you for putting a notification on Discord, Jamie. Uh, I don't understand why. Everything is enabled. Can we blame the storm? Maybe. So I'm just using this beige red because obviously I haven't said the colour. Just this beige red to get this initial pink down and then I need a little bit of brown around the edges. A very light tan brown. I might actually just be able to get away with going heavier on the pink. I don't know. I will see. Morning Natalie, um, you did get the Twitch, but it was after Jamie put the Discord one out. Hmm. I don't know, I don't know what's going on. So, it's obviously working for some people. Only here for a little bit and then got work in a few. Oh, never mind. Work has to get done. We've got the storm raging outside. Storm Debbie. Is it Storm Debbie? I uh, woke up this morning and it was absolutely lamming it down. Right, I'm just going to go in with a slightly, I'm going to go in with a cinnamon, Let's see how, I... actually I want it to be sharp. Earthquake on the uh, pencil sharpener does its thing.
just going to use really light pressure with this cinnamon just to go around the edge of where this pink is. It's almost like it's just a bit more highly pigmented. Pencils out that I'm using, don't I? So I can put them on Discord later, uh, YouTube later. a little So everybody have a good weekend. We had a nice sort of relaxing weekend, I must admit. It was nice to just switch off for a bit. You had a nice little getaway. Where did you get away to? Right, I'm going to go in with the cold grey one now. I'm just going to work on this section here above the nose. Oh, Little Hampton, yeah, I remember you saying now, yeah. Was it nice? Did the weather hold for you?
just sort of trying to to get down this muzzle. It was freezing but no rain. Oh, wasn't freezing here. I went out on, uh, I think it was the Saturday morning to take Rosie for a walk and it was, it was sunny, but it was really windy and so I thought, oh, it'd be really cold. So I put on my winter coat, my, um, my beanie, got loaded up with the uh, podcast to listen to and uh, sort of headed out and within 10 minutes I'd taken it all off the beanie was off the coat it was just so so hot and I'd got this thick jumper on underneath and I was too hot and by the time I got back I was literally sweating It was really surprising to sort of have this nice, this nice day. Not been expecting that at all. Unlucky. Still using this cold grey one just to get down my initial base layer over all this white. It's quite a large section, so it'll just take me a while just to get it all down. Most of this dog's face is in white, as you can see, so it's not the most interesting bit to do, but... I spent the weekend um, just sort of, I played the odd few games with Nick, managed to get him hooked on CSGO, <laughs> so I was like, come on, let's just go over, let's just do a little bit of CSGO, all the controls are pretty much the same, you just have to press E to plant the spike, uh, well, let's plant the bomb, and there's just a a shed load of different guns that you have to get used to and a shed load of different maps to start memorizing and 
and he was playing it for hours yesterday but I decided to do a little bit of um, drawing I did a few drawing tutorials on drawing um, fantasy creatures fantasy people I found a couple of YouTube videos um, decided to start going in with the basics because I mean you've all seen what my drawings like. I'd love to be able to just draw from my own imagination I'd like to think of something and just go right okay I'm gonna get that down on paper just from my own head not copying from another image and for it to be really good so you know no pressure <laughs> No pressure that I'm putting on myself but I thought I'd start off with tutorials I'll start off with basics so learning about basic body shapes and um, faces because the faces I really struggle with faces and hands I really really struggle with on people and it's a completely different skill to drawing animals and um, hang on I'll show you what I did my little sketchbook so what I started off with was um, the basics on on faces so we started off by like drawing circles and splitting up the zones so you had like a forehead zone you had a nose zone and you had like a mouth and, and chin zone and so I was sort of looking at how you you chop a face up into thirds and how you can either shrink those zones or enlarge those zones depending on what you want. So like up here, we shrank the nose zone and extended the, the chin zone. I'm gonna use the word zone an awful lot. And then I came over here and I did like an orc face. You can see he's got like horns and like orc teeth, which I pinched off of the film Bright. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. And then we did this sort of character that was uh, the study for the YouTube tutorial. So it was all about, you can see all these marks on the face where I've got all the different planes of the face. So you have the cheeks, the chin, the nose, the eyes, all the different areas and uh, the ears and the horn. And we put in an eye patch that made it really easy not to sort of do eyes. And then I came over here and did my own without looking at a tutorial. So I did the side view of of this creature over here, um, which didn't go very well. <laughs> and then I did this guy down here, which I thought wasn't too bad. I gave him a sort of Roman nose. His eye is completely wrong because like I say, I can't do eyes, but I'm kind of happy with the with the beard and the jawline. And then I did um, two fantasy figures in full. God, right, okay. So I did this lady, she's got a really small head. So yeah, I got her head was completely out of the dimensions. It was just like so bad. But I learned from this that when I'm drawing, I need to draw limbs longer than I think I need to draw them so and she's got tiny hands here as well and I didn't really didn't really show her feet properly I sort of hid them behind these these robes but I, w I was happy with like this shoulder area I like this bit and I like the arms and yeah so anyway that was my my female figure and then I did this sort of like I don't know ogre is ogre the right word for it I don't know so this was another tutorial just starting off with basic um, face and sort of body shapes and then going in step by step and sort of like for this arm I literally just had a straight line to start off with and so then I started putting in uh, musculature and trying to imagine um, bones and muscles and things. So yeah, uh, 
they all look really amazing. Stop being so critical. I know I can't help it, Jamie. I can't help it. I feel like the head again is too small. I feel like I use the same sort of teeth that I did on on this bit on the ogre here. But yeah, I mean it needs shading, it needs coloring and everything, but um but that was my adventures in doing fantasy drawing over the weekend because I thought if I can at least make a start on doing getting the basic figures in my head of what a body looks like and then changing it on whether you're drawing a human or whether you're drawing uh, you know an ogre or a troll or an orc um, or an elf and then trying to work on once I've got that down that the basics down so I'll be practicing that a lot get just getting the basics down just doing basic figures and then starting to work out how to do those figures in action poses so you know like drawing a bow or in the middle of a sword battle or, or something and just sort of slowly work on those bit by bit and then I figure once I've got those sorted then I can sort of once I feel competent in doing figures and faces and hands I mean hands holding a sword or holding a bow are going to be really really hard but um yeah, I figure once I get the basics done, if I get that sorted in my head, then I should be um, a lot better at at what I'm doing. So, yeah. But it was such fun. It was such fun just to be doing something different. I really, really enjoyed it. Right, I'm going to use the warm grey one now just to sort of go over that section that I've just gone over. Yeah, I do struggle with the whole um, criticizing my own work. I, I literally can't help it. marking in where I've got some shadows with this warm grey. I'll just help add in the uh, the bone structure in the face. hard for you to see on the screen but it's there. You might be able to see it better in the photo when I put it on Discord later. And then over here 
here we have quite a um, quite a shadow. But yeah, so I had really good fun drawing those um, fantasy figures, and I came across. Um, an artist on YouTube who, oh my god, he draws the most amazing fantasy art. He hasn't put much on uh, in the last five years at all, but prior to that, oh my gosh, and so I tracked him down on, tracked him down, sounds like I stalked him, I looked him up on Instagram where he posts more regularly. His name is Christopher Lavelle and um he is just amazing actually let me put his uh let me put his website into the chat hang on uh, you should check him out he is amazing absolutely amazing I was just blown away at the stuff I watched one of his videos that he did of him creating a piece of art based on Medusa and oh my god it is gorgeous gorgeous and he he mixed up all his media so he was using um, pencil graphite charcoal he used paint he used colored pencil he used fine liners um, he put some gold leaf in he also used um, something called hard stuff almost like no more nails though that stuff that you can put on he used that to get texture and while he was drawing he had a little accident midway through the drawing where he spilt coffee onto his paper just the odd little splash and he liked the staining of it so then he put coffee over the rest of it and I'm just like whoa you know because I would just be like terrified to take those sort of risks that he took with his art and I'm just like oh my god you know you don't have to just stick to one type of of art which is why I thought for the Friday piece the next Friday piece um, I thought I'd stick in some line art do some ink line art And so far, yet again, you're all tied on what you want. You, you're tied on the house, you're tied on the insect menagerie, and you're tied on the octopus. There's two votes for each of those. And it's like every time I put pictures on Discord and ask you guys to vote, there's always a tie that I have to break. And at the minute, I think it's probably either going to be, if I had to choose, it's either going to be the octopus or the insect menagerie. Because I'd prefer to do those two rather than the house. But um, I thought it'd be fun to play around with different ways of doing art and different subjects and... You know, not just doing a singular portrait, which is what I've done before, like I'm doing this dog, or I've done a donkey, or a butterfly, or a cat. So yeah, so now I'm just going to go over gently this white section with the warm grey over everything. But 
but yeah, I was just really inspired by this guy's art and his techniques. And this was the Medusa piece that he did was just something that he created out of his own imagination. So all his art comes from his own imagination. And oh, total fangirling moment there, you know. Because the thing that I do is that I very often confine myself to a box that I I set out and I go right. I'm just gonna I'm gonna do this and I'm just going to do this. Morning, Faisal. And I thought I don't have to just do this. I can do more than just animals. I could do other stuff. I could do. Um, art that doesn't just include coloured pencils. I could do um, graphite. I could do ink. I could do fantasy. So I can do whatever I want. So this warm grey is just going over the areas where I've put all the cold grey down and this just sort of just lifts it slightly from this background colour. It's hard to see on camera but it is there. Right, I'm just going to go in with the dark sepia and just make a couple of these sections a little bit darker. Uh, you're busy today, but you had to say hi at least. Hi! <laughs> That's okay. Busy is good.
Um, <laughs> birthday cake for Rebecca and Jared. Um, okay, hang on. Right. Um, 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 um. Just move the paper so you can see. Lots of little decorations on the cake. Let's put some, we'll do a sort of pinky color for one candle. I'm not gonna draw two cakes, even though they have got two cakes in real life. icing on one side and we'll have pink drips pink drips and then blue icing on this side cake for Rebecca and Jared. It's cute. I'll put pictures of their actual birthday cake on uh, Discord later if I, rem if I remember. If I remember.
I happen to know that there are at least five other no, not five, uh, four other sets of boy-girl twins celebrating their 23rd birthday today because when I went in to have my planned caesarean for Rebecca and Jared um, afterwards in when I was in recovery, the nurses and midwives said to us that there must have been something in the water because on that day they delivered three other sets of boy-girl twins on the same day that uh, Rebecca and Jared um, were born. And so we had, <laughs> I, I was in a private, all the mothers that had had twins all seemed to be in private rooms. And um, yeah, so all these other parents that all had a set of boy-girl twins that were born within hours of one another so that was that was kind of crazy so it just makes me wonder what these other 23 year old sets of twins are out there doing today but, uh, we had to have a, a c-section because throughout throughout the pregnancy um, one was head down and one was head up and they said to me that <laughs> destined to meet up and team up to save the world that's funny um, throughout the pregnancy they kept saying oh there's plenty of room for them to both become head down but if they stay uh, one with their head up under my ribs and one that was head down then we ought to do the c-section because you could give birth normally to the one not normally but you know what i mean um normally to the one that's head down and then the one that's head up would have to be breech and you may have to go in for a c-section for that one so it would just be easier just to do the c-section for safety reasons and so we agreed to this and um on the day we had another scan just to sort of double check that they were still in the same position and they were and uh and we we got there at like seven o'clock in the morning and we were scheduled for 3 p.m in the afternoon to go down to have the c-section and we'd had the scan and they were still you know in the same position that they'd been in all this time and um and then my surgeon, who I'd been seeing throughout the entire pregnancy, um, was caught in traffic. And uh, so it was like half past four when we were finally called in uh, to have the C-section. And when they actually went in uh, through the sunroof, <laughs> as I always say, um, they were both head down, but it was too late by then because they'd cut me open. But I'd not felt them. I'd not felt the other one move and change their position. So that was really sort of crazy. So that entire uh, 37 weeks and three days they were born at. And Jared was Jared was six pounds three, and Becca was five pound thirteen. So um, that was a lot of baby. That was a lot of baby to be carrying. Um, so, you know, like nearly 12 pounds of baby plus placentas because there was two placentas because obviously they were in separate sacks and two lots of amniotic fluid. Um, I measured, my waist measured at 57 inches. <laughs> <laughs> um, right before the C-section because uh, I wanted to see how big I was and uh, yeah so that that was the stats for the day and they they said that during the uh, <laughs> during the the C-section um, 
Becca was obviously the first one to come out. She was twin A, as they like to call. And when they cut through the layers to sort of expose the womb and then they sort of open up the womb, she pushed her hand up, um, still in the amniotic sac, uh, and put her hand up. And I can remember the doctor uh, who was doing the operation said, oh my God, she's waving. I've never seen that before. I've never seen a hand come out and wave at me like that. And uh, and yeah, so Becca was born at um, thirty seconds before Jared. There was just thirty seconds between them, so they got Becca out. She started crying instantly, and then Jared immediately came out. There was no problem with them. They both breathed really well didn't need any supplemental oxygen or anything like, yeah she wanted a high five yeah damn right she was like finally because all throughout the pregnancy um she had kept because she was the twin that was head down she had kept engaging in my um birth canal and kept sending me into premature labor so from uh, 21 weeks i kept going into premature labor and I kept being sent to various hospitals uh, in and around the local area, or well, not the local area, sometimes we had to go quite far because um, our local hospital, whenever we went in, each time I went in, in premature labor, they didn't have two free um, warmers in neonatal. So they would not have been able to have looked after both. It would have been a case of, well, we can look after one here, but we'd have to send the other one to another hospital. And we didn't want that. And so they were able to transfer us each time to another hospital. So I got sent to hospitals, uh, two separate hospitals in London uh, in on various occasions. Once I went to uh, Hammersmith and the second time I went to a different hospital which I would not name because I had huge complaints about them um, just so that we could find a hospital that had two warmers in the neonatal unit in case they got born early so I went in at 21 weeks uh, in premature labour I went in at 23 weeks with premature labour, 27 weeks and 31 weeks. So we went in at, at separate times because I just kept going into labour. And uh, we used to joke that Jared was pushing her down and sort of uh, pressing her into service, so to speak. And uh, yeah. But the, the hospital that I will not name, um, they had managed to stop the contractions, but I suddenly developed this really bad headache and it was really like a, not a thunderclap headache, but just just really sudden, just a really, really bad headache that sort of came on. And I was confined to bed. I was told... Um, it's bed rest. You can only be in bed because obviously you keep going into labour. And um, so I was sat there and I've got this really bad headache. And so I you have a call button, don't you? When you're in hospital, you have this call button. And I would press this call button to uh, ask for assistance because I wanted painkillers or something for this headache that was really bad. And I kept pressing on this button and I could hear the, the buzzer outside my door indicating that I wanted help and I was pressing this buzzer for an hour and a half no lie an hour and a half I was terrified to get out of bed because I was told I wasn't allowed to get out of bed and do anything and I was literally continuously pressing this buzzer for an hour and a half and this was sort of like just after lunch time and Nick turned up for a visit and as he walked in, obviously the light and the buzzer is flashing above my room and he comes in and he says, oh, is everything okay? And I, I was like, oh, thank God you're here. No, 
I've been buzzing for an hour and a half because I've got this horrendous headache. It's making me feel sick. I'm feeling really unwell with it. And I was worried about like preeclampsia um, because the risk is obviously high with twins and things like that. And um, I said, but nobody has come to see me. Nobody. And so he was like, right. <laughs> and he sort of set off out there, literally found someone and dragged them into the room to um, prescribe me something for this headache and sort of give me a, a check over and everything. It wasn't preeclampsia, it was just a really bad headache, which was really, really lucky. Um, but he was furious. And afterwards, when we got out of there, I was furious because at the time I was more scared than anything but I was absolutely furious afterwards. And obviously we went on to have a healthy pregnancy, a healthy delivery, which was absolutely fantastic. But a year later, that hospital was on the news because babies had died. Babies had died because things weren't put into place for people to be looked after properly. There hadn't been enough staff. And it was just, it was scary. It was really scary afterwards to say that was the one that we went to. That was the one that we had problems with. And I mean, what if it had been preeclampsia, right? I mean, the only thing to sort out preeclampsia is to, is to deliver the babies. That's, that's how they solve that issue. And that mine were too early to be delivered. And it's just like, well, what would have happened? The what, if, the what if, just sort of, um, just sort of sits in my brain sometimes. And I always think about it on their birthday. So you're all really lucky to have them here, chat. <laughs> I'm really lucky to have them. And yeah, so scary, scary time. I just feel for all those families that uh, that didn't get the outcome that they should have had. Anyway, brighter and better things. They are here. They're absolutely wonderful. And they're really good as babies. Everyone tells you that twins are going to be hard. Twins are going to be difficult. It's double the work. And actually, the twins were easier than James. <laughs> the twins, they had each other to entertain each other you know when you just have a single baby that baby requires you constantly to entertain it especially as it's you know as they start to get older and they don't want you to leave them you leave them sat on a mat to play with some blocks and things like that so you can go and get a quick cup of tea and James would cry didn't want me to leave him and things like that and it would take even if I was out of the room for 10 seconds, it would take a while to sort of console him. But with the twins, they just played with each other and babbled away to each other in their own little language and everything. And it was just like, I could go and get a cup of tea. I could, I could leave them to play on their own for a few minutes while I gave myself some self-care, you know, get myself something to eat, get myself something to drink. So, yeah, but anyway, they're here. We're going to have a very nice day, and uh, I think they've requested spaghetti bolognese for their birthday meal. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be cooking. Everyone is easier than James. He's very easy to look after now, shall I say. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but no. The, the the twins were good. The twins were good. They are good. I feel.
feel like I've done more talking than drawing today. Right, let me just, I just want to get this shadow in a little bit more and then I'm going to have to call it for today. Okay, so that's where I'm going to leave it today, I think, chat. And um, I'm going to go off and celebrate the twins' birthday with them. Because I think they're waiting for me so that they can open their cards and, and things. Um, my kid is 100% not coming before my tea. Well, exactly, you've got to have priorities, right? <laughs> Yeah, got to have priorities. Right. Okay. So that's where I'm going to leave it today then, chat. Thank you for joining me. Um, I hope everyone had a really fabulous weekend. And um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I will see you here tomorrow. If you haven't gone over into Discord and voted for the Friday project, please go over and do that for me if you can. And just that I don't have to keep breaking the stalemate all the time. <laughs> and uh, I will see you guys back here tomorrow. So take care, everybody. Bye.